Greetings, fellow Empyreans. I am Ashtarothy, the voice of New Eden, and this is your New Eden News for March 20th, YC 126. Evermore accuses NES of Capsuleer Monopoly amidst new Paragon platform rumors. Uli Genesis. Evermore has filed legal appeal with the Secure Commerce Commission calling for an investigation into the New Eden store for antitrust violations. According to Evermore, the NES's commissary contract with the Society of Conscious Thought is an effective monopoly on capsular services. Following this news, an anonymous source within Evermore has revealed that Paragon, an Evermore subsidiary, is developing a new artistic platform for capsuleers. Iris, Paragon's AI liaison, has declined to confirm or deny the development of a new platform, or any possible connection with the appeal, quote, Paragon development is on a journey to help our capsuleer partners be more. Iris stated in a press conference held in Paragon's headquarters in Orofe, I'm so glad that this is just as exciting for you as it is for us, but you will have to wait a little longer before we reveal our next destination. As for the Ness, our parent company is founded on the promise to bring all things to all people. Non-competitive behavior is a barrier that restricts our ability to fulfill that promise to our partners. The Ness has held an exclusive commissary contract with the SOCT since YC-118. The contract was initially issued for skill trading products, but has expanded to cover a wide range of services. The NES is run by a board comprised of representatives from numerous notable corporations. No official response by the NES has been made. However, board member Ganochar Asabona accused Evermore's president Alexander Dukas of petty bullying tactics when speaking with reporters outside of his home in Conad Prime 1 earlier today. He went on to accuse Evermore of, quote, using their Cremo's lackey to spy on NES board meetings and bolster their fraudulent claims, end quote. Cremox Inc., which Evermore purchased a controlling interest in last year, has held seats on the NES board since its foundation. Their CEO, Daphne Frontaroach, has declined to comment on the accusation, but sources close to Alexander Dukas has informed the scope that he is taking legal advice on a possible defamation lawsuit against Asabona. News in brief. Break-in discovered at GRNJ TAC-3 Intaki Space Police Testing Facility reportedly targeted prototype syndicate drop suits developed in partnership with Mortis Legion. Air Laboratories is preparing to publish its first findings from its ongoing research into New Eden's capsuleers. SOCT launches a new astronomical observation platform aimed at understanding abyssal dead space and its denizens. First ever Shapash lost in combat during an engagement in the system of Asset. CDIA actively seeking information on our combined figure identified as Life Giver. Following the reappearance of this alias, known to DED since YC-114, in Deathless Affiliate Communications. Major investments from an undisclosed organization has been independently reported by Ostacon Agency and Intara Direct Action in their recent SEC filings. Edencom prepares new abyssal scouts as Triglavian communications become quieter across Pochfin. Now some analysis. So Evermore is, of course, the major corporation that founded around the fallout involving Interbus. Interbus being the kind of neutral distribution company that existed that came under jeopardy when the conflict between the empires had risen to the point that Concord started to become strained last year. During that time, the president of then Interbus died of a mysterious heart attack, and very quickly he was replaced by Alexander Takas. And within a week, Iris, their AI liaison, was announced and Paragon was announced. Paragon being the context for things like Evermarks, which are how we get customization for things like logos and such for our ships. Now, further customization is rolling out with Corporation Evermarks being able to be used now to customize skins for structures. And CCP has said that this functionality will be coming to ships in the summer expansion. So that's what this basically is. Up until now, the NES has been the main place to buy skins, and Paragon is contesting that. So this is setting up the idea that we would be able to get new ship customization abilities via our Evermarks from Paragon. This will become an alternative source. A couple things to be that's kind of interesting based on the more obscure lore in this is the fact that Kremox Inc. is a very well-known cloning company and the reason why they're being brought into this is because they are both listed as being on the board of the NES they were part of the founding of the NES back in YC 118 which is 2016 with the release of skill injectors in fact if we look at the announcement of the NES 
and more importantly, the introduction of skill injectors and extractors, the Ness was said to be the exclusive contract holders for that. And it lists their board of interests, which includes Chromox Inc., which is, of course, one of the corporations that was purchased when Interbus reincorporated as Evermore. They purchased... Interzone Shipping, Zero-G Research, Adaptive Provisioning, Valor Spec Ops, and Chromox Inc. Cloning Corporation, as well as opening up their own entertainment platform, Verity Inter Enhancements, and augmenta sorry, that's the uh, augmentations, and then Vapor Speed Technology, Cloud-Based Computing Company, as well as Interplanetary Media Network, a cluster-wide network of planetary news and entertainment media outlets. So, you know, while Iris is free to assure us that they don't mean any problems with this, this is not their first major organization, uh, established organization within New Eden that they have bumped up against. And I think that beyond that, I'm not sure if there's anything much else to say than that. Conid Innovations, the character here, Ganochar Asabana, is the CEO of Conid Industries. Oh, there is one other thing that's worth noting, which is that Chromiox wasn't in the game prior to Paragon and Evermore. Like they were mentioned in the scientific article about cloning, but they weren't like an entity inside of the game. And so they added them into the game as well as this character here who's listed as the CEO, which is Daphine Fronteroche which I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. But in previous listings of Chromox, they were the CFO. So clearly they've gotten promoted in that period of time. But otherwise, you know, all of these different interconnections really make sense if you look at these different organizations and who make up them. Next, the break-in discovered at GRNJ Tech 3 Intaki Space Police Testing Facility is kind of interesting. One of the things that isn't listed here is the Kemmel Tech convoy that was ambushed yesterday. Given how much it was set up, I would have expected that to be here, and it's not. However, this reference to the Intaki Space Police Testing Facility is likely to be part of that, given the fact that the Intaki Syndicate is connected to Upwell through uh, Mortis Legion and Intaki Bank, and the Intaki Bank was where the Kemaltech convoy was going based on these new cloning technology that they're working on. So these seem to be kind of going together and relating to the development of counter vanguard forces for Upwell and their subsidiaries. The Air Laboratories one is kind of interesting. It implies that there's going to be some sort of update to things. Air Laboratories is the people who have taken over the MPE, and they have kind of put it in as a opportunity to introduce new tech into the game. So while I don't necessarily know for sure what this might mean, you can see that this is clearly setting up something that might lead into the summer expansion. The SOCT launching Astronomical Observation Platform there has been continued conversations about Triglavians and Pochfin and SOCT and Sisters of e like all these different groups all the time. So it's hard to necessarily pull this out as being significant above anything else. One of the things, the first ever Shephash lost during combat, this happened less than 24 hours before this article was written. So uh, that Shepash was lost 10 hours or more after the convoy ambush. So I find it particularly interesting that they contain this piece of news, which is as recent as like 10 hours prior to this article coming up, but not cover the convoy that they would have known about ahead of time because there was a week of planning and they obviously made it happen. Uh, that happened before that, 24 hours, over 24 hours ago. CDIA actively seeking information on Arkham Mind figure, no, identify as Life Giver. So the fun thing about this is that the Life Giver, I have no idea who that is. I've looked him up. I can't find him out. I've looked through everything in uh, YC114. I don't see anything that could be registered as a Deathless affiliate. However, there was some planetary attacks, but nothing that I could necessarily tie down. And it really seems re connected to like Dust514 lore. Editor Ash just want to jump in here and say that there is one option for who the life giver may be. There is a character in Templar 1, a pretty major character, an Amarian medic named Gable, who is identified as life giver several times by Mac. Uh, another character and ends up likely being one of the earliest people to work on the Templar prototypes and thus the earliest clone soldiers. So if you want to trace that to believe that she 
then goes on to join the Archimbine when it forms and becomes some sort of character within their world and takes on the title that she's kind of given in during the course of the events of Templar One as kind of her title, then that could very well be who it is. Not quite sure, but that is literally the only reference to Life Giver I can find anywhere in any of the books as well. And then speaking of the death list, major investments for undisclosed organizations have been independently reported by Ostacon Agency and Entire Direct Action. Anytime I see Ostracon Agency and Entire Direct Action together in a listing, I think of the Deathless, given their connection to him back in Shandeli. Now, Ostacron Agency has not played into the Deathless more recently, although Entire Direct Action has. The Ostacron Agency has been largely laying low since their acquisition of the agency. But, um, you know, as I've suspected before, it could be that Ostracron Agency is the Deathless is in on being able to control the agency. And his clear access to it may make uh, precipitate changes within the agency. So we're looking at Air Laboratories releasing their findings, Evermar building up their political clout, the Ostracon agency coming back into the news based on undisclosed financial investments, all suggest that it could very well be possible that we're going to see some pretty major restructuring of the tools that we use in game or the groups that we interact with and why in game coming in the summer and beyond. And then Edencom prepares new abyssal scouts as Triglavian communications become quieter across Boston. Yeah, it, it, they keep teasing this Poshman stuff. It, it, it doesn't necessarily come, it hasn't come out to anything yet, but we'll have to keep watching it. But with all that said, that is all of my analysis about today's New Eden news from March 20th, YC126. Uh, I have been Astrothy. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you to my top supporters, which can be found down below. If you wish to join as a supporter, it's only, I think, I'm pretty sure it's a dollar a month, a little bit more if you want better access, but you get all of my edited videos a little bit early and access to the supporters Discord and uh, chances to talk to me and, and influence what I'm saying and my eternal gratitude. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. What is your prediction for the summer expansion? I'm I'm really interested to know what other people think might be coming with the summer expansion, given all of these little uh, doodads. But until next time, I've been Astrothy. I've been playing this game since 2010, talking about it since 2012, and I'm here to put Eve into context for you, my fellow Empyreans. Thank you all for listening, and until next time, I'll see you in space.